Hey guys, before I start the video, I'd just like to say that we have a new merch store with some nice clothing lines that come out and a bunch of sizes, different kinds of shirts and colors. If you're interested, go check it out. They're only available for a limited time, so definitely get them while you can if you are interested. All right, now to your video. Yo, what's poppin' guys, and welcome back to another platformer tutorial video. In the last one, we went over our basic movement system, and if we take a look at that, we will see that it works just fine. We can go up slopes, we can do some wall jumping, and it's totally customizable with how it's done like that. You know, if you want to, also, I just realized you can't actually get to that platform, <laughs> but uh, that's not important. It's fully customizable, given the fact that you can simply come here and change variables like jump height, friction, ceiling, cling, slopes, a wall jump horizontal, and wall jump vertical, all from right here. So today we're gonna cover level changing, changing from level to level. So I'll start by having this one, and I will duplicate it. And let's say I'll just rearrange the platforms for level two. Let's say level two has something that looks like this. That's our level two, maybe, right? Who knows? I don't know what's going on here. We'll do we'll do something like this. Yeah, we'll do like we'll do that there. That's our level two. And you see, since we already named the first one one, when we duplicated it, it already assigned it to two, and that's how we're going to be keeping it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to, so we'll briefly click it switches to one. That's good. We're gonna make a new sprite, and there's two ways to do this. One, you can make maybe an object that'll teleport you, that you can place anywhere on the map. Some people like to have it so when you just touch the wall on the side, you would go to the next one. I'll show you how to do both of those. It's very easy. So I'll quickly make maybe like this little red gem. And this red gem is what'll teleport us from level to level. Something like that. Okay. We'll call this the level gem, maybe. I don't know. So first of all, we're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the first level and place it where you want the end to be. Maybe I want the end to be right here. So wherever you place it, uh, once you place it, it'll change these variables right here that you can use to then put wherever you'd like. So we'll do a green flag. We'll be changing this code later to make it look a bit better. But for right now, we're just gonna, uh, doing proof of concept. So on green flag clicked, we will show. And we will go to. And then X, you plug in this number. So you can just take it. Control C and Control V. And then the Y, Control C, Control V. There you go. So now even if you move it over here, we hit the green flag, it moves back up to where it's supposed to be. Okay, fantastic. So now we need to have a system that generates when you touch it. So we'll come to our player and we will click, or we will check when green flag is clicked. We will first of all make a new variable and we will call it level. You can choose to show this or not. Uh, I don't think it's necessary at the moment, so I'm just gonna keep mine hidden. But then again, if you wanna show it and maybe like put it somewhere nice, you definitely can do that. I'm just personally not going to. I don't think it's very important. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll do this in the levels option. We will set level to one. So when we start off, our level is one. Come back to our player. And when the green flag is clicked, we will run a forever loop. Forever, if we are touching the level gem, we will change level by one, wait 0 0.01 seconds, and then broadcast a variable or a message called new spawns. That's what we'll do. So we'll do that. We will hide at the same time. So we'll go change level by one, hide, wait 0 0.01 seconds, broadcast new spawns. So now what that's going to do is it's going to detect every single time we touch it. So obviously when we start for the first time we come here, so that's fine. But now what we're going to want to do is come to our backdrops here. Come do the code. Go when green flag is clicked. Again, we are in backdrops tab at the moment. When the green flag is clicked, what we will do is come to our controls, grab it forever. And we will do switch backdrop to come to our variables and put level right in there. Since our level will be a static a, a static number, like one, 
uh, the name of our... Oh, these aren't backdrops. I'm actually an idiot. Hold up. Sorry. Levels. Put this in levels. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put this in levels. And then instead of switch backdrop, it's switch costume to. Sorry. Switch costume to level. So since it's uh, one, both level one, see that how this costume is numbered one. Both this number is one, as well as the name. We're doing this as a safe keep for each of these. It makes it easier. So now if you see, when we come up and collect our gem, if we can even get up there, yeah we can. You'll see it changes the level and our character hides. So that's good. Now we need to change where the gem goes. So when the gem goes, we will do this. When I receive new spawns, we will check if. So first of all, I want, I want you to look at this. Look how in the player, right here, it changed the level and then it will broadcast. You don't want the broadcast to be above the level because then it'll run before the, the it changes. So you make sure that your change level is above your new spawns broadcast. So back into level gem, when I receive new spawns, we will run a check. So we'll make this an if else for now. And we will do if level equals two. Reason being is because on level one, it already goes where it's supposed to by doing this. So if level equals two, like this, if level equals two, now you will assign a new place for it to go. Say right here. And now that's 193 and 119. So we will do this. We'll just copy that. And 193 is our X. Again, you can check over here to see that. And our Y is 119. Okay. Let's take a look. Ooh, yes. Okay. Our square guy never re-shows. So when the green flag is clicked, make sure we show him. And then at the same time, after this, put a wait 0 0.01 seconds. And then put show. Well, actually, don't do that yet. <laughs> so level two, where do you want him to spawn? So what we could do is we can take this new spawns and we can put it right into the player. And then we can take it. So now we're here. So when I see new spawns, if level equals two, we'll show our player. We will uh, quickly uh, switch the backdrop, or not backdrop, the level to level two. All right, because the level, right? Okay, that's because this is running. Okay, hold up. So let's quickly beat this level really quickly. There we go. Okay, and now it does that. So come to here. So when I receive new spawns, we will have to go to an area. So the reason it just hid like that is because it's going to the same area as the gem because we copied it. So we're going to show our player. We're going to move him where we want him. So stop it so we can go up in the air. Like that. And then our numbers are negative 187. And our Y is negative 128. Okay. And then I'm going to, just as a safe keep, put a 0 0.01 second in between. So... Here we go. Level one. We'll jump up here and we'll touch the sprite. And now we spawn back over here and it moves up there. And we can go up there and touch it again. And you'll see it just moves back to the first one because we don't have another level. So I'll, I'll make one more level just as a demonstration. So level two, just like that. So level three, we'll do something like, I'm going to teach you how to do good level design in a future episode. But for now, We're going to keep it like this, maybe. Yeah, there, there, there's a level. Okay, there's level three, and you see it already renamed itself because we duplicated. That all stays the same. So now we will duplicate this in our player. If level equals three, I am completely fine with him being in the same spot as he spawned in level two, which is around right here. So that's fine. Now the level gem, we'll move it over here like this. Now I'll duplicate this, put it in this forever loop, or in this else. If level equals 3, which is what the new level would be, it goes to negative 184. And again, checking over here on the side. And Y of 83. Cool. Now we'll check one more time. So that's just off at level 1. In which we can complete and grab the gem. And then level 3 generates. Okay, good. Yep. Awesome. And then it restarts us at level 1. That's because, again, we don't have another level. So... That is basic level switching. Switching from level to level. It's very easy. Ooh, all right. I thought I said I was going to show you how to do the other, other version of it. So the other version of it is when you touch the wall, you move on to the next level. So just as an example, I will get rid of these three walls. Okay. 
So you go, the walls are gone. Now what we're going to do is this level gem. I'm just going to make a costume of it just for an example. So you'll make it like that. So it can cover the entire screen. Right? Just like this. So level gem, we will put it on the side already. Just on the side right over here. Put on the side of the screen as far as you can get, make it go. Which, by the way, is 240x. And then, we will have it instead, level gem. We will still have it show. And also, make sure you change this. So, it's 240 right now. Since it's against the wall. 240 and negative 6. We'll come to looks. And do set ghost effect to 0. And then, this new spawns thing, we'll just unhook it. Because we don't need it for this version. Therefore, when the ghost effect is at z or ghost effect to 100, I'm sorry, ghost effect to 100. So it'll be there, but it will appear invisible. If it's hidden, we won't be able to interact with it. But since its ghost effect will be zero, or your, its ghost effect will be 100, and it still will be there, it still will be showing. We just won't be able to see it. We'll still be able to interact with it. So it'll work all the same. And to prove this, here's what we'll do. We'll start. You'll see it's an empty side here. You can't see the level gem. But if we come over and hit this out of the wall, it generates the second level. And then generates the third. And generates and then resets us. Just as it normally would. Well, that's how you do that. I'm more of a get the thing myself kind of guy. Not gonna lie. I'm overdo this kind of thing. I'm gonna put the walls back now. Okay, cool. Yeah, but that's basic level movement. Oh my goodness. All right, I changed where it went. I changed where it went. Right here, I'm an idiot. I'm dumb, I'm dumb. Negative 188 and 128. Okay, so yep, yeah, that's where we're gonna end the video. Just some basic mo things. Again, I do not recommend um, making a game just based off of this. You could, but your game is going to be just like all the other platformers that exist. So I highly encourage you to watch the rest of the series as it comes out. Or if you're watching this in the future, uh, watch the rest of the episodes to learn how to create good levels, how to create interesting level design, and how to distance your game from the other ones so it stands out more on the, either the explore page or just in the crowd of platformers. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because... Uh, hopefully, if you're sick of seeing the same platformers over and over again, this video series will make somebody else make a good platformer that is different and unique. Uh, while you're at it, want to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content, that helped me out a lot. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> not all that. That's really it. Thank you so much for watching. Check socials, link in the description. Peace. <laughs>